When I went to go pick up this Dodge truck back in August, I ran a trailer, a car dolly, from uh, a local rental yard. And luckily for me, this ran. I was able to drive it right up. But I got to go in the next week or so and pick up a vehicle that's not running, and I'm going to use a car dolly again. So, since it's going to be only two people involved, I decided to uh, search the uh, interweb and the Google encyclopedia and came up with some ideas on how to also rent another car dolly, but have the availability of having a winch pull it on. And I'm going to show you how I did that in the next couple of videos that I want to add to this video. I'm going to try some editing. So stand by and check out my uh, adapt a winch to your hitch video. All right, well, this is side project Sunday, and this does kind of pertain to the Dodge. So, um, I might need to go pick up a donor car here in the near future uh, with a car dolly, and it doesn't run. So, trying to get a car up on the car dolly, I uh, went to the Encyclopedia of YouTube, and I saw a guy who used this hitch configuration. This goes in the back of your truck. This is an adjustable hitch. Your ball goes right here. And basically, he made a bracket to put a winch on the top of this. Now, I have, I built this a couple years ago out of an old winch off my trailer. It's a 4,500 pound, 4,500 pound winch that slides into a receiver on the back of my pickup truck. Uh, you double it up, it doubles your pulling power, but it only gives me 10 feet of pull. because This is, uh, I think it has 25 feet or so of cable on there. But still, more than long enough to pull a car up on top of a car dolly. So now, instead of unbolting all this and making a new bracket, what I think I'm gonna do, go through my scrap pile, is uh, take, not this piece, but a, cut a piece off, cut a piece off of this, have it go down here. Now I will have to notch it a little bit so it goes down a little further, not too, not, not too far. But once that's notched, then I'll take and I'll put a piece on top of it, as so. And that way I can put this, what we got here? Yeah, this will be sliding down here and I'll have a top piece up here. And I can slide that through and just put a bolt through it to hold it. And that should give me uh, a removable mount so I don't have to change this. This could stay the way it is, but I can adapt it to this. I'm gonna replace these pins with some uh, 5 8 bolts. Um, just makes it a little cleaner and you don't have to worry about losing the pins or anything. So this isn't uh, the perfect scenario. This is only rated at 5,000 pounds, but on a car dolly, that's more than enough for what I'm going to do. Don't want to over-engineer it, so just a couple cut cuts on the old uh, bandsaw and a little flapper disc cleaner upper and just weld it on. I'll just drill one hole through here to keep it on and I'm not even going to drill a hole on this piece I'll just put a bolt a longer bolt in the very back so it just can't pull through so easy peasy show you what I get her all done okay I got it marked out at three inches now my bandsaw here is pretty old I've had it for I don't know at least 15 years a good friend of mine Rick I used to work with uh, gave it to me when he was helping me move a shop an old Ramco Industrial. I'm on my last blade, and I think it's easier to get bandsaw blades for it now. For a while there, I had to go to a place in Corona where they custom made them, but uh, it doesn't work too well. The The shock doesn't work anymore, so it just has the full weight. The shutoff switch is rotten, so I got a little switch here to turn on. I got to kind of hold it. Um, I don't know. I keep saying I got to go through it and fix it up, but it still works. So, let's get to cutting. That's a little bit of a slow process. But, uh, we'll get the job done. Alright, well I got the pieces cut. And I got a hole drilled through for a bolt to hold it on the hitch. And I got a bolt drilled through the middle here. They'll go through the pin there or I could stick it all the way through 
and just pin it from the rear. Now I got these two plates on the side clamped, line up centered. I cleaned everything up and I was going to roll it outside and start welding, but it started raining. So I'm going to probably tack it up and then uh, wait a little bit and finish it off. Now I know what you're thinking. They do sell a hitch that has a hitch that it comes up and it has another piece where, like you can put a rack for a bicycle and everything. This one was $25 and being as I have the scrap steel and the, the time and the tools to make this, it wasn't worth the extra $25. Plus it was going to be more in shipping to buy the one that had the bigger piece up on top. Plus that other piece was really big. I didn't know how that would affect where the bumper is, anything else. And you know, this is removable. So, you know, and it's a lot smaller. But uh, for each application, have at it. You can buy the one that's already pre-made and just slide your hitch like that into it or be thrifty and crafty. Either way, it's fun. What else am I going to do? I guess I could work on that window like I was last night, kicking my ass. Now I can't turn my head one direction. All right, back to this. Shazam! Just a, I don't know, hour, hour and a half, and uh, it's done. So, uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow, I don't have the nuts and bolts for it here at home, but uh, I think those are 9 16 bolts that go through here. So, I'm going to go to McFadden Dales and buy some that are the right size of the Teflon nuts and lock those down. Uh, I do have half inch bolts that go through the two temporary mounting spots, and they have a uh, Teflon. Uh, not time right now, but I think what I'll do is get a couple of half inch pins because I want to bolt this on full time because it's always going to be in that lower position. And this you're going to take off and on. But what this does for me, and it could do for you, is it allows you to keep your winch on a piece of two inch square tubing that will fit into a trailer hitch. Because I take this with me when I go off roading, or not really off roading, but where there's no asphalt. And it's just a little peace of mind. This came off an old trailer I used to load cars with, or tractors or whatever, and I got rid of the trailer so I kept the winch. It's only a 4,500 pound winch. Uh, I took the controls, kind of cut them down, uh, take it, I think it's 10 millimeter nut, and these two connectors go on, blue on the top, yellow on the bottom. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, I got the, the controls, you know, in and out, and then uh, connect to a battery. So, when I put this on the front of my truck, it's real simple. You just hook it to the battery under the hood and, you know, you can run this into the cab of the truck and, and use the control. Uh, I got the remote somewhere, but it was kind of glitchy, so I just kept it with uh, the hand control because it's really precise. As soon as you hit it, it goes. As soon as you hit it, it stops. The remote had a little bit of a lag. And, of course, it's a cheaper winch, and you're going to get that. Um, this is only a 4,500-pound winch, but if I want to, I can put this. I got a hole here. I can mount this. Shackle underneath, I can add this snatch block, and this has a nice swivel on this hook here, and I can, you know, double up the line, which will give you directly double your pulling power. But for pulling a car onto a car dolly, which is what my plan is, I got a car that won't run, and I'm going to be picking it up in the next couple of weeks, and the car dolly, I've got to get a new ball for this one. I hate taking trailer hitch balls off of one hitch another. I just soon go buy a brand new ball. Put it on here with some Loctite, torque it down, and that way it's always together. You know, I have a feeling the more you take these on and off, on and off, I just, why well, take the chance? For like 20 bucks, just get the right size ball. This has the larger hole. You know, get the full size three quarter inch uh, shank. Don't mess around with the, um, the adapters. Put it on here and tighten it down and leave it. That's why I want to put the bolts on here with the Teflon uh, lock nuts. Uh, grade 8 bolts, put it on here, lock it down, forget about it. And of course, these need to come off and on, so it makes it, uh, you know, removable. But uh, like like right now, the way this is once to set up, uh, I'm not going to use this truck, but if I take my other truck to go get this car, and i got to pull it out of the weeds, I can take this, put it on the hitch on the front of my truck, do whatever pulling I need to do, uh, hopefully it has enough power. But then when it comes time to actually pulling it onto the trailer, I mean, this would work with a full-size trailer, too. This cable is plenty long enough. I used it on my old, uh, it was a 12-foot trailer with the ramps. And I had plenty of length and had plenty of power with a single line to pull up a, a rolling car. So, but uh, here it is. 
This is if you want to rent a car dolly or rent a trailer. It doesn't have a winch. Um, getting this drop-down winch on Amazon was $28 total. I already had a winch. Most people, I guess, maybe you do if you don't. This, this actually, I could replace this wrench on Amazon right now with a synthetic cable and 6,000 pounds with a decent rating for around 250 bucks. But, you know, hey, this works. I'm not gonna spend the money until this one stops working. And hopefully it doesn't stop working with a car halfway up on the trailer. But uh, make do with what you got. All right, there it is. That's my uh, portable winch for when you rent a trailer. And it comes off and you're right back to just a normal, normal hitch. So, uh, there you have it. All right, and I wouldn't use a, like a 110 China uh, welder on that if uh, you home do-it-yourselfers. But then again, hey, who am I to tell you what to do? I'm not an expert. I'm just out here showing you what I'm doing. And I don't claim to be an expert. So, have a great day.